We've been talking about the Cartesian plane in three dimensions using rectangular coordinates for the entire time, but there are other coordinate systems that may be beneficial, which we'll see later in the course, namely the cylindrical system and the spherical system. So we're going to start with the cylindrical system because the cylindrical one is probably one that you're more familiar with from calculus too. Um, one of the ways that I try to describe the cylindrical system is that it's polar with a Z. And let's just go back through, just in case you don't remember polar coordinates from Calc 2. Um, but a polar sort of function um, is some sort of relationship that's based on R and theta. So F at theta is our function, or that's R. So for instance, we might have something like R equals um, 2 cos of theta. And the way you would plot a coordinate in spherical is that it's based on the ordered pairs R theta, where theta is going to be the angle formed by the positive x-axis and R is the distance from the pole. All right, So um, you might remember something like if you had 1 pi fourths in polar coordinates, then you would just move out one unit and you would construct an angle of 45 degrees and that's where your point would end up. All right. So now in three dimensions, we're just going to have r comma theta comma z. All right. So we're basically going to look at the xy plane, sweep out r and theta, and then we're just going to go up z units from there. All right. So um, it should be a pretty easy thing to be able to plot. There are some relationships you may remember from calculus too. Remember that r square was equal to x square plus y square, and that's the same thing. Remember that theta was equal to the arctangent of y over x, if we were to solve for that. Remember that x was equal to r cos of theta, and remember that y is equal to r sine of theta. Right? So these are going to be important relationships that we need. Now the only difference, or the only new relationship that we have is z and z is going to be equal to z. So z is the same in both Cartesian coordinates as well as cylindrical coordinates. All right, so um, knowing all that, this is just a summary of essentially what I described all right, and a few examples of how to try to plot r theta in the xy plane and then we have a z coordinate that just goes up there. Okay, so um, when we look at this point right here, P, then we just sweep out theta from the positive x-axis. The radius is the distance from the origin or the pole. And then Z is just the distance on the z-axis. Okay, so one of the first exercises you might remember from calculus 2 was being able to convert back and forth between polar and rectangular. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert between cylindrical and rectangular. All right, so we have this point, r theta z, and if it's r theta z, that's how we know we're in cylindrical. Um, that's going to be equal to 4, comma, 5 pi 6, comma, 3. We want to plot that and then convert it into rectangular. All right, so here's what we're going to do to plot it. All right, so this is our positive x-axis. All right, so let's just kind of use that as our benchmark, and this is our z positive. Now we're going to need, for this problem, we're going to need an x negative. Okay, so, so think of it like the wall in your house, um, and then maybe a corner extending into the next room or something like that. So we're going to go four units from the origin. So this is r. And we're going to sweep out an angle of 5 pi 6. And 5 pi 6 is just a little bit less than pi. I think it's 150 degrees. So we're going to sweep out an angle of about 150 degrees. And we're going to end up right about here. Okay, so imagine that we're in the xy plane. And then we're just going to go up three units. All right, so we're going to go up three units. And right here, I'm going to try to draw this as large as I can should be approximately the point, and I'm going to call that P. Right? So that's how we would plot it. Now to convert it, remember that x is equal to r cos theta, or 4 cos 
5 pi 6. Right? Um, cosine of 5 pi 6, um, since x is going to be negative, then in this case, cos of 5 pi 6 is going to be negative, and that should be 4 times minus root 3 over 2, or in other words, negative 2 roots of 3. Now y is a lot easier. y is going to be equal to 4 sine of theta, which is 4 sine 5 pi 6. Sine of 5 pi 6 still above the y-axis, so that means it's positive, and so that's going to be 4 times positive 1 half, or in other words, 2. And we know that z is equal to z, which is equal to 3 in this case. So, in terms of x, y, z, this point is going to be negative 2 roots of 3, comma, 2, comma, 3. And if you just look at the graph, that seems like it's about right. Okay, so we're going to go back negative 2, roots of 3. Um, root 3 is about 1.7, so if we multiply that, it's about negative 3.5. So we move back about negative three units, and then we move to the right two, and then we would move up three units, okay? So if I was plotting this, I would go here to here in the plane, and then I would go up three units, all right? So it does look like from about 3.5 and two, like right about there and go up, it certainly looks like it would make sense. If I had a little bit more refined drawing, then um, we could probably get a little bit better um, result out of this. Now, what if we wanted to go the other way? What if we wanted to take a, a point that was in Cartesian and we wanted to plot it in cylindrical coordinates, okay? So, here's what we're going to do. Negative root 12, right? So, we're probably going to have a, something very, very similar to the previous. Okay? So, we need an x negative, we need our y positive, and then we need our z positive. All right, now, negative root 12... I'm going to punch that in my calculator real quick, and that's about 3.5. So we might actually have a very, very similar point. So negative 3.5, maybe right here, and then we're going to end up with 2, and then we're going to go up 4 units. All right, so maybe if I was plotting this, we'd end up in the plane over here. And we go up, so maybe right about here, as best as I can kind of draw that. Right? Now we're going to convert. Remember we have that r square equals x square plus y square, or in this case negative root 12 square plus 2 square. Um, so that means that r squared is going to be equal to 16. And this implies that r is either positive or negative 4. And we're going to have to wait until the end of the problem to determine whether it's going to be positive or negative. And it's going to be based upon how we derive theta. Okay. Now for theta, remember that theta is the arctangent of y over x. So that's going to be 2 over negative root 12. Um, root 12 is 4 times, or 12 is 4 times 3, so we can rewrite this as the arctan of negative 2 over 2 roots of 3, or arctan of negative 1 over root 3, and I believe that that's going to end up being negative 30 degrees. So, theta should be equal to minus 30 degrees or negative pi 6. And of course z is 4 because z equals z which is equal to 4. All right so ultimately we have to decide whether we're going to use positive 4 or negative 4. And I think most of you can probably see that we're going to end up using negative 4 because we have to go back on the axis. All right, so I'm going to draw this again. Okay. So we would have to say that r is negative 4 to go back 4 units. 
Since theta is negative pi 6, we're going to go towards the positive x-axis. So that's going to go this way just a little bit because 30 degrees isn't too much. And then we would go up four units or uh, four units in this case. And so we would end up with our point right about here, which makes a lot more sense than if we would make um, r into positive 4. So our answer for this is going to be in terms of r theta z squeeze this in here is going to be equal to negative 4 negative pi 6 and 3 or 4 excuse me 3 was the previous problem All right. so again you just have to be careful when you're doing these types of problems when you're converting from Cartesian to cylindrical because there are occasions where you have to decide whether R is going to be positive or negative generally if, if the, ang if the um, coordinate falls uh, toward the x negative axis, you're probably going to use r as negative. Not saying that's, that's always the case, but in general, that's a rule of thumb. So in the next series of video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at taking equations and converting them from the cylindrical form into the um, rectangular form and then plotting those and then after that we're going to talk about some um, spherical coordinates.